Hello guys, in this video, we will use Spline to make a crystal attack effect in Niagara. We can play it, you can see the effect like this. Of course, we can also control the direction of the effect by changing the position of the Spline, like this. Also, we can make it turn. Ok, now we have the crystal material from the last video and we add a dynamic parameter to control it in Naira. This is our complete crystal material and there are not many changes to other nodes. And we need to change the parameter values in material instance. Just set to these values and then we can get the crystal surface effect. Ok, now let's create a Niagara system. We use the empty template. And add a spawn burst in emitter update. Set count to 100. And we need add a new module in particle update. Add a spline. We need to sample spline position, so let's search sample spline position by unit distance word space. Add a position in map set. Also, we need to change namespace to particles and module. Let's connect the position. In sample spline position, the float u means the normalized distance of the spline. Zero is the start position, one is the end position. So we can add a normalized particle index so that the particles can correspond to the spline. Just add a float, rename it to index. In the module, we can search index and we get a return normalized exact index. Ok, save the Niagara. Let's create a blueprint and add a spline. Yes, that's what we need to use. And we need a Niagara system. Select the Niagara system we just created. Ok, now we can see it doesn't work. It should fill our spline, but not, so let's check it. Let's see. Yes, we find the error. We have a namespace module, so we didn't set the particle position. It's still zero. And we need to set the particle and the module position to particle position. Ok, let's save the Niagara. We can see it work. Now we can change the spline position to control the particle position. Now let's add a mesh render. We can use the rock static mesh in starter content and use the crystal surface material we just created. Oh, it looks too much. We need to reduce it. Set spawn count to 10. It looks better. And now we need to make the crack flicker time and the frequency random. So we can use the dynamic parameter in Niagara. Let's add a dynamic parameter in particle spawn and frequency speed, we need a random value. 
zero point three to one. And the flicker time, we need a random value two, negative one to one. Now we can see the crack flicker time and the frequency are different. Also, we need to change rock size, make it gradually bigger. So let's add some parameters in module. First, rename index to count. And add a float. Rename it to max count. And use count divide max count. Its function is the same as return normalized exec index. Also, we need to change life cycle to self and loop behavior to multiple. Loop count and loop duration, we can use a user parameter to control it. Let's add an integer and a float. Integer rename it to loop count and the float rename it to loop duration. In this way, we can change it at any time in the blueprint. Set the loop count to user loop count and the loop duration to user loop duration. Also, we need to set user parameters value. 10 and 0 0.1 and spawn count we also use a user parameter to control it a integer parameter we name it to spawn count and set user spawn count to 10 now we can set user parameters in custom module Count, we need a particle index, not normalized index. Particle index is an integer, so we need a multiply float by integer and return particle's unique ID. Max count is the total number of particles, so we need to use loop count multiply spawn count. And now let's set the rock size in custom module. First, we need a remap range. Value is count, also is particle ID. Input mean and input max is the first and the last particles spawned. So input mean we set to zero and input max, we set it to max count, subtract one. Output mean and output max is a range of rock size. So we can add two float parameters for output mean and output max. And rename it to mean size and max size. Connect them. And the remap range output, we need a float. Rename it to size and change namespace to particle and module. Connect this parameter. Now let's add a scale mesh size in particle update and put it under the module because we need to use the parameters in the module. Add a vector from float. We can use this float value to uniformly control mesh scale and add a multiply float. Set A and B to particle module size and uh, a parameter we control. 
Also, we need to select mesh scale mode in particle spawn. We select random non-uniform. And we need to set custom measures max size and mean size. So the mean size we set 3 and the max size is 10. Now we can see the rock is gradually bigger, but it looks like too much, so we need to change the size. Set B to 0.1. Okay, it looks better. Now we need to set initialize mesh size. Make it look taller. So let's set mean 0.8, 0.8 and 3 and the max value is 1 1 and 3.5 okay not bad but they are all in the same direction it looks terrible so let's add some rotation for rock add an initial mesh orientation in particle spawn and uh, set mesh orientation mode to none. We need to change the rotation, so add a random range vector. The minimal x is negative 0 0.05, y is same, and z just 0. Maximus x is 0 0.05, y is 0 0.05 and Z is 1. Okay, now we have this crystal attack effect. We can put it in the level. It looks good, but it still lacks the effect of rising. So let's add a velocity in particle spawn. And the axis set it to 10,000. And add a drag module in particle update. Set the drag value to 20. We can see the rising is not obvious. That's because we set the particle position in custom module. So we need to let the velocity control the z axis of our particle position. Add a particle position in map get and break position. We need to use particle position's z axis. X and Y axis we use the spline position. Let's make position and connect them. Okay, now we can see the velocity controls the Z axis position. This caused it to detach from the ground. And we only need to change the position offset to fix it. Bend the position offset, set the Z axis to negative 500. Okay, this is our crystal attack effect. Hope you enjoyed. Bye.